Welcome to Business Class. I'm Steve Ekstrom from Learn Tourism, a nonprofit academy dedicated to advancing the tourism industry through innovative training and sustainable practices. Our mission? To empower travel professionals and communities with the knowledge they need to create meaningful, authentic, and sustainable tourism experiences. Ready to join us on this journey? Visit learntourism.org and start making a difference today. Steve Ekstrom here, host of the Business Class Podcast, where I get to talk to people who make places worth visiting. Today's guest is no different, wearing awesome glasses and joining me from New Orleans, Alice Glenn, Executive Vice President, New Orleans and Company. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much. I'm so pleased to be with you. How did you get your start in this industry? Like so many of us, my first real job was in hospitality, working in a restaurant as a hostess. It was short-lived and I meandered back around sort of full circle into the industry. But here in New Orleans and in Louisiana, the hospitality and tourism industry is such a foundational part of our economy that it's honestly difficult not to be either tangentially or directly in the industry. My path was a little circuitous. I wanted to go into politics, or at least I thought I did. So I started out on political campaigns and backed into some fundraising expertise, which took exactly one statewide gubernatorial race um, back in the early 2000s to um, lead me to decide that was not what I wanted to do. The lifestyle is really challenging. Um, and uh, frankly, campaigning and fundraising and politics of that sort are a, a, a different breed than actual government administration and policy work. Luckily, I had some expertise in fundraising that I used to move into the nonprofit sector, fundraising and then running um, nonprofits for a number of years. I went out on my own in, let's see, back in 2016 with the birth of my first child and decided that one of the things that I had observed in my nonprofit tenure was that there was so much work that I was doing and in order to be successful had to do with various government entities and agencies. Despite not being on the inside of government or politics, I was still very much engaging um, in that space. My last in-house gig, if you will, um, in the nonprofit sector was with the Louisiana Restaurant Association, again, um, in and connected to the hospitality industry um, very directly, who was considering a, uh, a mayoral bid at the time, asked me if I would come on board with his team to help him with some fundraising and community affairs work as a consultant. He was at the time a state legislator and the speaker pro tem of um, the State House of Representatives here in Louisiana. So fast forward, he ultimately decided not to run for mayor, but his legislative assistant retired um, for his last term in office. And he said, Alice, we really get along well. I think we work together well. Would you consider taking this role and still keeping a small portfolio of clients as a consultant, but coming on board to help me through this last term? You've got a lot of policy initiatives that you want to push forward. You want to learn more about the inside of government. I think this is a win. So I did. So our current CEO here at New Orleans and Company, Walt Leger, former state representative, was my boss and colleague in um, the state legislature while I kept a number of clients on a consulting basis, sort of part-time. And what really crystallized for me, Steve, was that at that intersection of politics and government and the nonprofit sector and the business sector, um, only those folks and entities who were managing those relationships and understanding the levers that needed to be pressed effectively across all three sectors were affecting change in a meaningful way. And so that was a really just a, something that I had been building up to throughout my career, but really crystallized for me the importance of having expertise and being able to navigate that intersection effectively. So when Walt was term limited at the House of Representatives and deciding what his next move was, he uh, took this role that I currently have as executive vice president and then ultimately became CEO of our organization here in the hospitality industry. I helped him for about a year as he was preparing for that transition to CEO. Luckily, he had a long runway to prepare in just thinking through the transition and how he wanted to design his tenure and transition. And when he did ultimately assume the CEO role, he asked me to come on board as EVP. 
and take the position that he had formerly held. Many of my responsibilities in this role are the same things that I've been doing. So government affairs, strategic planning and organizational effectiveness, a number of other components of the work that I was doing, whether as a consultant or in the government sector, but applying them here in this role and through the hospitality industry. What do you think is the greatest misunderstanding people have about the work that you do now? That it's always really fun and easy to get folks to travel to New Orleans. <laughs> and the truth is, that part may be very true. It's not hard to convince someone to come here for leisure travel. We're known, um, and rightfully so, with a well-earned reputation for um, international cuisine, for music, for fun, for all the really unique cultural assets that we have here in the city. But the work that we're focused on here at New Orleans and Company is less about attracting a leisure visitor who would probably be predisposed to coming at some point. Focusing on the meetings, conferences, and conventions um, that are really a critical part of our city's hospitality industry and tourism economy, but also um, are contributing in a much more significant way to that economy and to the overall revenue stream that we have through the industry here. You know, we, um, we're a small city. We've got less than a million people in our greater metropolitan area, but we are outsized. We punch above our weight in so many ways, but we're outsized in the number of restaurants, the number of attractions and entities that we have here in the community. And that's because we're bringing visitors and particularly business travelers and convention meeting travelers to the city. If they're not here, our businesses do not thrive. They do not succeed. So that's really where we're focused um, on really looking and growing this particular market segment um, of traveler here to the city. I had a conversation recently about uh, values and the values that a community shares with its visitors and also how visitors are starting to make more and more of their decisions based on their own values. Is that part of what you're seeing in this evolution of New Orleans in that you're finding more visitors who value the culture, the art, the heritage than just the lively evening entertainment? Absolutely. I'll tell you, first of all, we're seeing it, the professional meeting planners and convention planners that we work with on a regular basis are hearing very loud and clear from their constituents that things like sustainability and environmental considerations are really high priority to them. So we've had to make sure and in partnership with our convention center partners that we're really paying attention and doing what we can to raise the bar on sustainability and the way that we go to market as an industry and as unique entities and assets. We also have a lot of conversations with folks on values and more of a, a policy sense. New Orleans is a, a unique destination within um, Southeastern United States, inclusivity, welcoming visitors of all stripes and I think that our team has had to become experts in many other topics than they previously were just to sell a convention or to book a tour. And I think that's for the best, right? I think that in almost every case, when you've seen positive change in any industry, it's because it was consumer driven and the consumers demanded it. And in this case, travelers are demanding it. And so it's making us better. And to follow up on that, I think there's something to be said about leading by example. And a lot of what we see that creates life and that, that feeling of unwelcome is this othering, if you will, mm -hmm. making people feel like they're an other type of group. And when folks are introduced to it and it's not a bad thing, we all become better people for it. That's my thought. I certainly couldn't agree more. In New Orleans has been known for our 400 year plus history as a place, as a melting pot, as a gumbo, right? You hear these words and they're a little cliche to us at this point because we use those terms so often, but it's absolutely um, authentically a part of our culture and our community. I think that any traveler senses that people here are grateful and happy that you're here. They want you to love our city as much as we do and honor it in ways that we demand. And that's really important to us. 
the role of DMOs is really changing and has been changing for quite some time. We're not just marketing our city or our community or our destination anymore. A large part of what I do on a daily basis, along with some of our other team members, is push our city and our assets to be better, to be more welcoming, to be more accessible, right? And or, or to be more sustainable. And that that's a uniquely challenging role for a DMO to play, but one that I think we're particularly well suited here in New Orleans to, to lead on because of the importance of our industry to our community and to our economy. A very wise person in the industry once said to me, what's good for the resident is great for the visitor. And even I if the reverse isn't more. always true. I think that certainly that's true in our case. It's one of the ethos that we've lived by in our, particularly under Walt's leadership here at New Orleans and Company is we want to make sure that the rising tide is lifting all boats here. And so that includes residents and particularly hospitality workers. And that that shows through in when a visitor comes. Absolutely. What is something you learned in your own travels that you take to work with you every day? Oh, gosh. Something that I, I'll tell you something that I've been noticing, particularly in the last few years post-COVID travel, is a different experience than it was previously. One of the things that is so incredibly important and valuable to me is noting when folks anticipate your needs. And that's something that I think the, the Disney company is one that's focused on that for a long time, that learning who your customer, who your audience, who your visitor is before they arrive so that you can help make sure that their experience is seamless and enjoyable and easy as it can be um, is incredibly valuable. And so we really try hard, um, and particularly in the, the initiatives that we're trying to lead on, accessibility being one that I highlighted just a moment ago. The easier we can make it for you to get here, to travel around our city, and to make sure that the needs that you may have that we've anticipated, I think, go a long way to making you want to come back. Yeah, yeah. I am a digital nomad, so I am connected via Starlink from a state park in Florida because I'll be at the DI conference in just next week. Will you be there? I'll see you there. I'll be there. Yep. What's something you wish more destination marketers knew? What an interesting question. I think that there are a couple of things that, uh, because I'm fairly new to the DMO world, right? And one of the things that we've really, um, that we've had a lot of conversations about here at New Orleans and Company is we're not just marketing. We're not just selling our destination in an inauthentic or non-regenerative way, if that's what our day-to-day -day mission is, then we're really not doing our job properly. From what I've heard, there's more and more emphasis on community, on making sure that the way we're going to market and the way we're doing our jobs is uplifting our community in a meaningful, not transactional or extractive way. Um, but I would love to see more conversation and focus in that space. What's one thing you would change about your community? We say a lot that, you know, we're one of the largest industries in our community. We would be delighted to be the third, fourth, or fifth largest industry in our community. <laughs> that doesn't mean our footprint has to shrink at all. We would love to see some other industries grow. And we're working hard to think through how we can be a part of that uh, relationship building exercise, if you will, with other business leaders and, and entities. Have I not asked you that I probably should? <laughs> Oh, gosh, I don't know. We're working hard here. One of the sort of everyone's got this bucket of special projects, right? So anything that's really unique or interesting or complicated or long term tends to fall into under my office, which is really fun. And so one of the things that we've been really focused on is what we're calling elevating our core cultural assets. So food, music, all of these things that you associate with New Orleans, top of mind. But let's take food, for example, because this has been um, a, a uniquely exciting quarter for me. 
We are known for uh, delicious food. I think everyone who comes here has that, where they're going to eat on the, um, the top of their to-do list. And we know that it's really fun and we know that people are welcoming, but what we really want to, to be able to articulate and help drive in terms of positive change is elevating the respect and the recognition that our culinary and other industries, but specifically this one, receive from the larger culinary editorial community and so forth. So we put a, some resources behind and have put a strategy together to start moving that needle. And so we hosted for the first time in the United States, the Boku's Door America's competition here in New Orleans last month. Uh, which was such an incredible honor to see some of the most well-known and celebrated chefs in the world here in New Orleans singing our praises and enjoying all of the meals that they had, so much so that they want to come back in two years. There's an unprecedented decision that they, I think, are very close to making. We went straight from there to an activation at Aspen Food and Wine Festival and have had a number of other meetings with some of the other food writers and industry um, influencers, because we want to see our, who we know to be very talented, innovative, creative, um, brilliant culinary minds here in our city get the recognition that they deserve. And we believe that will drive visitors to their restaurant and drive um, customers to their businesses in a way that hasn't previously been the case. This is one of my really fun passion projects that I guess you'll know the results. You'll know we've succeeded when we succeeded. <laughs> I think that's something special about destination organizations and the people who work for them is that you're sharing what you love and that is your own community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only are we sharing our community, which we clearly all are very passionate about, but we're also sharing what makes our community here so uniquely special. Hospitality is part of the DNA of the people of New Orleans in a way that is very unique. And so that's really an honor to be able to communicate that and tell the world about our city and invite them here. On that note, if folks want to learn more or plan a visit, how would they go about doing so? You can visit neworleans.com and truly every bit of information that you ever wanted to know about visiting our city will be available. Thanks for tuning in to Business Class. This episode was brought to you by Learn Tourism, the nonprofit academy where we advance the tourism industry with cutting edge training and sustainable practices. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to visit learntourism.org to learn more about our programs and how you can get involved. Until next time, stay curious, continue learning and making a difference through tourism.